Hi, this is episode 20 of the Weekly Roundup. We've got a real mishmash of products this week, from audio boards to IMUs to radios, and a couple of new SBCs. There's a real mishmash of stuff on Kickstarter this week. The Stingray is yet another wireless sensor board, very similar to all the other ones around, but packs in pressure, temperature, heart rate, blood oxygen and IMU sensors as well as Bluetooth, Cortex M4 MCU and LiPo charger. They claim a 50Hz sample rate, which isn't incredibly fast, but usable in 99% of applications. This one is odd in that you don't actually get the product when the campaign finishes. All you get is the chance to purchase it at a reduced price. Hmm. The DackBerry one is interesting for me as I am working on a project that begs the question, does a PWM controlled LED emit ultrasonic frequencies that a mouse can hear? Okay, long story. Anyway, it's a high quality DAC that fits onto a Raspberry Pi and is capable of sampling up to 384 kHz at 32 bit resolution. It uses the Wolfson WM8804 chipset, which has been in other Pi products before, but this one provides coax in and out, or BNC stereo out, headphone jack, and Toslink out. The VGA Duino 2 is an upgrade on the previous Kickstarter and gives you VGA output for an Arduino. This one now handles up to 400 by 300 resolution at 60 Hz at 256 colors per pixel. It uses the LPC1756 ARM chip and Xilinx XC95144 CPLD for handling all the sync grunt work. Communication is via standard UART so you could really use it on anything. For a bit of bedtime reading, you could always pick up Deep Learning for Computer Vision. Written by Adrian Rosebrock. You might know him. He's been around a bit, having written a previous book on practical Python and OpenCV, and is really a guru on machine vision. If you're into marine robotics, then the T200 thruster might interest you. It's an upgrade on the previous Kickstarter with double the forward and reverse thrust, but also double the power requirements. This one requiring between 6 to 20 volts with a max current of 25 amps. Honeycomb is yet another STEM teaching aid that provides LEGO compatible magnetically interlocking hexagon blocks. This Kickstarter has three kits, the Music Kit, which gives you capacitive touch and a basic synth, the Camera Kit, with a 120 degree fisheye camera, SD card and a bunch of sensors allowing you to control capture of video and photos, and the IoT Kit, which gives you a bunch of sensors and OTA programming using Blockly, JavaScript or the Arduino IDE. All made by a team of, oh, this guy reminds me of Ivan Vanko from Iron Man. Hey, I want my board. The DIY Mini Lego drone seems to have taken off. It looks good, but no indication of what or how you can program it, or in fact what it actually contains. I'm assuming though, it's the same kit as the one on their website, but at a cheaper price. And a few honourable mentions this week. Digital I.O. expander card giving you an additional 32 GPIOs via I2C, and an attempt to mass produce some practical IoT shields for field use, and a non-jamming filament roller sensor allowing you to pause prints when you run out of filament and some stuff on Indiegogo that isn't a scam for once. The iBo looks interesting. It's a spherical display with capacitive touch and motion sensors. If they can pull it off, then it'll be something that everyone will want. If it wasn't being sponsored by Arrow Electronics, I'd think it was a hoax, but you never know these days. It's still in prototype stage, with delivery expected at the end of 2017. If you're the sneaky type, then the Malduino is a small USB device that will act as a keyboard and push out simulated keystrokes once inserted. It has so many uses. Well, well, the only thing I can think of is to annoy someone. This isn't really a maker product, but I've included it in this list because of the hacking potential. The Mudo gives you the ability to generate smells on demand. So far, they have only a small range of smell cartridges that you can use, but it'll only be a matter of time before someone hacks it to produce some more interesting smells. If you missed the Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns, the Quadbot is in the in-demand status on Indiegogo, so you can pick it up there still. Only one interesting thing on crowd supply in pre-launch, which is this mains power monitor kit based off the ATM90E26 chip. Not much information apart from that. If you're into robotics, then there's a new Intel Dual Compute module for the Aero Core 2 family. It contains an ARM Cortex-M4 running NUT-X RTOS, header for the Intel Dual, non-DOF IMU, 40-pin GPIO on top of the usual I2C, SPI, ADC and 8 PWM outputs and also optional GPS and LTE modem sockets. Remember the Pine64 reviews I did? Seems I've been accused by more than one person of single-handedly contributing to the demise of that board with my realistic reviews. Anyway, things seem to be moving on in the Pine64 camp, and apart from that small hiccup last year, they now have a product called the SoPine, 
which aims to take on the Pi Compute Module. It contains the usual 64-bit quad-core ARM MCU, 2GB DDR3 RAM, SD slot, and 128MB SPI flash, all in a small SODIMM form factor. They also have the SoPine baseboard, which contains various ports that they don't mention. I'm assuming it's the same as the original Pine 64. It's probably about time I revisit this board. Last week I seem to have missed out the whole Tindy section. Sorry about that everyone. So, this was last week's. Over at Tindy there's a great VHDL training board, which contains a CPLD, FTDI, 7 segment display, buzzers and buttons to get you into CPLDs. Nice little cheap unit. This little buck converter will accept a 7 to 35 volt input voltage and generate a clean 3.3 and 5 volt out the other end, at up to 1.5 amps. If you want a bunch of DACs and ADCs for your Pi, then this one contains a plethora of them, as well as PWMs, relays and digital oscillators. You'll never run out of analog lines with this one. The Sprino Puck is basically an expensive switch. Well, it is a switch, and it is expensive. It contains an NRF 52832-based SOC, NFC, capacitive touch, magnometer, IR transmitter, thermometer, light, and battery sensors. You can program it using JavaScript and get it to do a bucket load of things. Adafruit currently have a page, but no stock, so just get it from Tindy. EEPROM Duino is another board based on the Atmega 329P, but it also contains an additional 256 kilobytes of EEPROM and an RTC. Works off standard 5 volt supply or coin cell battery. And for this week on Tindy, the Nano Dot Matrix contains a thousand red LEDs in a high density format. The board ends up quite small. Good if you want to quickly make some name badges or why not chuck one into a tie. RoboPi is a kit that allows you to offload a lot of the real time control to a subprocessor, which is the Parallax Propeller. This is an 8 core RISC processor designed specifically for real time applications. It contains onboard voltage regulators, ADCs, and expansion header for micronauts. It's compatible with almost every SPC out there. Dixie, or Dix1, has to be the smallest Arduino board on the planet. This board has all the basics a SAMD11 MCU, button, and GPIO solder points. What else do you need? If you want a quick and easy soil moisture and temperature sensor, then Apple Brother has a fairly neat Bluetooth iBeacon based one all powered from a coin cell battery for up to a year and a half. Over at DF Robot, they have a large 64 by 32 RGB LED matrix panel that can be used outdoors. That's 2048 RGB LEDs. It will, of course, require a fair bit of juice, around 4 amps and 5 volts. I'm not sure on the control mechanism. I'm assuming that it's an 8-bit parallel interface. I mentioned this one in last week's roundup, but now Adafruit have the Espressif ESP32 W Rover kit in stock on their site. Seed have a fairly flashy re-speaker pro case which will make your re-speaker look much better and not like a hack. If you're into wireless communications, and I mean really into it, then the Blade RF at SparkFun will seem a reasonable price. Yes, it is expensive, but it can transceive any protocol from 300MHz to 3.8GHz. That means you can get it to speak RF, GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LTE, GSM, ATSC, basically anything. Pretty good package at that price. Or something completely related, the haptic driver motor breakout at SparkFun, which is accessible via I2C. So it's not just a simple driver for ERM and LRA motors. It's the Chinese New Year celebrations at the moment, so not much happening over there. Banggood do have a fairly cheap 40 LED circular WS2812 based display, and a nice 4 channel 16 bit ADC with gain amplifier, running off between 2 to 5.5 volts. And one thing that always bugs me is the annoying 3D printed or laser cut acrylic cases. This one is a proper injection molded ABS case for the Orange Pi Zero. Nice, I'm getting one. Over at IC Station they are still mad about Bluetooth modules, or either someone has just forgotten to update the website, but they have added in a bunch of cheap Node MCU Lua boards. I'm now trialling out a new YouTube feature called NCARDS. So at the end of my videos you'll now see something like this. Let me know in the comments below if you like it or dislike it. So thanks for watching, see you next week.